Muchas gracias por atender a, a Europa Press. Lo primero que quiero saber es cómo, eh, cómo llegas a este proyecto. Eh, ¿Cuál es el camino? Eh, si contabas de primeras con Tom Hanks, bueno, no sé. Good morning, thank you for having time for Europa Press. And the first thing I wanted to ask you about is how did this project come to you? How did you find out about it? How did you come across it? And did you count on having Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks on board from the very outset? Um, <coughs> I, I came across the, the, the book originally and uh, I, I fell in love with the book and then the Swedish Mer version. And uh, Frederick Wickstrom, uh, one of the producers who, who I knew from the past, um, uh, fa like was ma a meeting with Platon to ma make a deal with Rita and Tom, and and in, in the same time David McGee, who I've worked with on Finding Neverland, wanted to do an adaptation, and Frederick thought it was a good idea for for, for me to get involved. So so uh, uh, Renee Wolf, my creative partner, and I we met with Platon and David McGee, and we all fell in love with the same project. And so that was four years ago, Christmas four years ago. And uh, we started developing it, and then we started shooting uh, last February. And how is it to work with Tom Hanks? Uh, I mean, he's one of the greatest actors ever, and he's truly extraordinary. So it was a, a very uh, inex remarkable journey because our sensibilities match. And you know, Tom is like Tom is like uh, water swirling around the fountain. The center of the fountain is like the truth, and he's just like sort of nourishing from from that truth until he lands in the scene. And that's a beautiful process. <coughs> Eh, Max, se te suele eh, asociar con, con películas de acción. Es cierto que a lo largo de, de tu carrera eh, has tenido películas como comedia, como, como esta, por, por, que no, bueno, no sé si es una comedia exactamente. Eh, otro tipo de, de, de películas, sobre todo drama, como, como Monster World. Eh, ¿Hay algún género con el que te sientas más cómodo o te molesta también esa identificación solo con el género de acción? Um. Mar, you're usually known for action movies, but you've also done some comedy like this. I don't know whether you would uh, consider this a comedy anyway, uh, but you've also related to drama, Monster Bull, for instance. So uh, how do you feel about genres? Is there any genre in particular that you feel comfortable with or? Uh, you know, I, I I, lo I love, uh, you know, I love any genre, bueno, and I also watch any kind of genre. And I always was very inspired by uh, by directors like Howard Hawks or Billy Wilder, who do all sorts of genres, and uh, that sort of inspi and ins 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 inspires me. Uh, I think comedies is some of the hardest genre, uh, and I think so. Here, to have the balance between uh, drama and comedy was very hard to achieve. You know, the silver lining between making it people cry and making people laugh. And uh, you know, I it's a sim I made a film like Strange in Fiction, which was also a little bit more comedic, and and that's uh, so ultimately I I, lo I really enjoy the genre genre between comedy and drama. Esta película está basada en una obra que es antes de está escrita antes de la pandemia, pero es cierto que tras haber pasado ese periodo pandémico, quizás entienda un poco mejor ¿no? a, este, a este personaje por el tema de la soledad y bueno, todo lo que ha sufrido con las personas mayores. Mm -hmm. um. This novel was written before the pandemic, but now that we have been through a pandemic, maybe it's, it, we're in a better position even to understand the contents of, of this work because of the topic of loneliness and the elderly. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it's interesting how art can change through time and how the perception of art changes. And I think, as, as you just said, I believe that the novel became more important after the pandemic than it was before. And, I, and you know, I feel the film is very timely because ultimately it's about loneliness and someone finding purpose in life again and a community coming together. And I think uh, Marisol's character is so persistent, she wouldn't say no to an answer and she really cracks the heart open of Otto and ultimately gives him this new purpose of life. And I think that's what really life is about, that we find people that give us hope and inspiration to wanting to keep living. Mark, ¿no es irónico cómo, cómo la película muestra a una persona privilegiada o de una clase social acomodada teniendo que ser eh, levantado o animado por otras personas de, 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 de minorías sociales o, o raciales? 
Um, isn't it ironic, Mark, that uh, we find a character that is more or less affluent, uh, more or less privileged, and who needs to be emotionally uplifted by people who are coming from mm, people who are more socially disadvantaged or racially mm. disadvantaged? Uh, I, I think uh, not not so much because I, I think uh, ultimately you know often uh, the the more you have the lonelier you get. I think the the key thing of happiness and when I study happiness is really community and family. And if your social community is, is, is strong and your your relationship with your family is strong, that really gives you more purpose in life than being alone and affluent. El, el suicidio suele ser un tabú en, en cualquier eh, obra de ficción. ¿Ha sido complicado eh, rodar esas escenas y más aún darles un toque de humor? Mm -hmm. uh, suicide is normally uh, suicide is normally a taboo in fiction uh, works. Uh, was it difficult to film that part and mm -hmm. even more so to give it a humorous touch? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, you know, when I go back to Frederick Beckman's book, Cuando I think he, he, when he wrote Beckman about, de, you know, obviously de, the, the, the de, dark de, side de, and the light side de, in his book, de, and he was able de, to, to bring de, the humor de, there, de, I, I found de, it in, de, in, de, inspiring de, because I think de, the only way de, to heal de, is de, to talk de, about de, taboos. De, and uh, and ult ultimately, it's uh, it's the way of conversation that can help people and and can give them purpose again. So I, I feel it's it's imp if we keep it as a taboo, then we can never heal. Is it scary to age? Is that something that you reflect upon in this movie? <laughs> I, I think I think ultimately. We all, you know, we, we all born and we all die. And, and there's nothing. That the things you have to do, you're going to die and you have to pay taxes. <laughs> but but uh, uh, at, at the end of the day, I, I think, you know, when you get older, uh, sometimes, you know, you can be in the, the, the denial. But I think what's the key is getting older, that you, people that get are elderly still have purpose and still, you know, can be great teachers and mentors to other people. And I think, I think our society sometimes uh, excludes elderly people. And I think it's more important to care for them and include them because we can learn a lot from them because they went through mistakes and instead of us repeating the same mistakes over and over again. Sí, precisamente que, eh, quería preguntarte por eso, porque el, el personaje eh, en este caso hace un aislamiento voluntario, pero, pero es cierto que vivimos en, en un tipo de, de sociedad en el que eh, las personas mayores quedan fuera de, de casi todas las cosas y, y tiene que ver también eh, un poco ese sentimiento de que se queda fuera de esta sociedad aquellas personas que parece que no sirven o que no aportan algo, ¿no? Es un, un sentimiento que otras culturas eh, por el occidente quizá no tienen. Uh -huh. um. I actually wanted to ask you about that because uh, in this case the, the character goes into a voluntary type of isolation but we live in a society in which we tend to exclude uh, the elderly from almost everything and if they're not making a contribution, if they're not uh, positively contributing with something, we somehow set them apart and this is something that sometimes is more linked to this Western culture rather than other cultures. Yes, uh, I, I think I think that's very true, and I, I think we we need. I think it's a key of changing the Western culture that we actually, instead of excluding the elderly, <coughs> we should include them. <coughs> mm, sorry. I think it's an issue with the Western culture. Instead of excluding the elderly, we should include them. And I think uh, it's a big, it's a, ultimately that there is always, you know, for, for me personally, it's interesting that I, most of my mentors were always older in life, not younger. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.